So I was visiting a, um, a couple of years later, when I was, what, 23 perhaps, I was visiting a friend of mine who was in residence here at the McDowell Colony, a very good young composer named Bill Flanagan. I was visiting, and I was impressed by everything that was going on, thinking that maybe someday I'll get invited to the McDowell Colony, maybe, if I stop writing poetry, perhaps. <laughs> And I was wandering around the wonderful grounds, and I spied a shortish, balding man lurking in some pine trees. <laughs> I knew who he was, and I wanted him, even though he wasn't a poet, he was a writer, and I wanted him to read my poetry. <laughs> I had learned that no matter where I went, I always carried a small suitcase with me. <laughs> <coughs> of, my, of my work, you never knew when it was going to come in handy. <laughs> so I grabbed, I, I had committed many, many more poems by then, and, I, I, and <laughs> I grabbed a handful of, of, of some of the newer ones and, and, and searched him out, and I found him lurking under another pine tree somewhere. And I went into my act, and I said, my name is Edward Albee, I'm a poet, read these. <laughs> and thrust them at him, and um, he took them. And I guess he was a quick read, <laughs> because the next day he found me lurking under some other trees, and he said, Albie, I have read all of these poems. I want to take you out and get you drunk. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you know what I thought, of course since the time I had shown my, my poetry to Auden, it had undergone a sea change and was now of a magnificence that could not be discussed sober. <laughs> <laughs> Turned out not to be the case. The guy just liked to drink a little bit. So he took me out in some beat-up little car to one of the many pondlets that down the New Hampshire countryside, and uh, with, with a bottle of bourbon. And uh, as the sun was setting, and as the level of the bottle of bourbon was settling, <laughs> he discussed each of my poems with me. Um, he did something I thought rather odd. Every time he finished discussing one of my poems, whether he did this on purpose or not, I don't know. Maybe the first time was accident. He, he sort of slipped it into the water. <laughs> and by the time he had finished going over these 20 or 30 poems of mine, the entire surface of the pond <laughs> was covered with foolscap. <laughs> foolscap indeed. This man, whose name was Thornton Wilder, <laughs> when you're that young, you dare anything. <laughs> when you're that young, you will show your work to the great because you feel that they deserve the experience <laughs> of your work. <laughs> <laughs> 